evening. Uh, thank you for joining me for this talk. It's all about sleep and why on earth do you think sleep is important to a physio and how I might be able to tell you how sleep is important to you as students and how it's important for your parents to understand how sleep affects you as students. So I'm Debbie Martin. I'm director of a physiotherapy business, which has been going for about 35 years. And my interest in sleep came from looking at patients that had chronic pain and how sleep affects your processing of, of pain. And from there, because I've brought two children up and they've gone through their adolescence and seen what has happened with them and their sleep patterns and their sleep cycles, it really did foster an interest in, in why we sleep and how important it is to us. So from my perspective as a physio, I'm looking at things like when you're asleep, you produce growth and repair hormones. And that's why when you're little and around about puberty, you need your sleep to grow. And then during the rest of our lives, we also need sleep to produce our repair hormones, which actually keeps everything ticking over from day to day. The other thing that we need to look at is our ability to learn. And as a physio, I look at that in terms of getting people going into new ways of being able to move, changing their muscle balances, but from your perspective, it's how can you learn effectively and efficient, efficiently so that you remember what you've been taught and you can then apply it later on to other things that you are, you're learning. So why are we every night put into a state that's almost like a coma? We're really sort of completely out for the count. We don't know what's going on around us. Um, and this goes on for like eight to ten hours a night. Um, what they've done is they've actually looked at our brain waves to see what happens while we're asleep. And when we're asleep, there are about five different stages of sleep that we need to think about. Four of those stages are when we're not dreaming. And the fifth stage is when we are dreaming. So the importance of that is the non-dreaming sleep, and that we call non-REM sleep, is to do with when we file things away, so everything that we've experienced during the day, everything that's important, we're filing away in our brains. The REM sleep, and REM is R-E-M, and that stands for rapid eye movement. That's when we're dreaming, and that's when our brain is making sense of everything that we've put into our brains during the day, and comparing it with what's happened in the past, and making sure that all those connections are put together. The other thing with that bit of sleep, if we go back to the non-dreaming sleep, that's when your brain is, when you're younger, making lots and lots and lots, I mean, infinite numbers of connections. It's building a network, a bit like a computer network inside your brain during that non-dreaming sleep. You then have a little bit of dreaming sleep at the end of it that's making sense of the information that's been put in and comparing it with the information that's being stored away. As you get older, you actually change that proportion of dreaming sleep and you actually get it to be a little bit more equal until you hit puberty. When you have another period of time, when you have yet more longer phases of this non-REM sleep, where your brain this time is refining that network. So it's looking at everything you've put in your brain and storing it away in the right place and then knocking out all the duplicates, reinforcing the things that are really important and making sure you're consolidating that network. And your dream sleep is a little bit shorter. Now that's where it becomes really important and now I'm talking to all of you out there that are from 11 to about 14 because during that period of time the REM sleep, the rapid eye movement, the bit where your eyes are moving about underneath your eyelids while you're asleep is slightly shorter and that REM sleep is what makes you able to think about what's happened while you're asleep make sense of it so the next day you can make better choices. You're actually able to go through without having to consciously think about it. Well, that made sense yesterday, so this will make sense today. 
but that REM sleep is actually a shorter amount of your sleep cycle through the night. So that's why sometimes things when you're in that age group between 11 and 14, maybe 15, your brain isn't quite able to deal with the emotions, to deal with what's happening on social media, to have a rational discussion without it becoming an argument because you haven't had that amount of sleep that's put everything into perspective and that's made everything in proportion to what it really should be feeling. Things feel a lot, lot more intense during that period of time. And it's all to do with how your brain waves are working while you're asleep. So you can see how really important sleep is going to be to you in how you're behaving. But we can also look at how sleep is important to you when you're learning. And that's that bit about the non-REM sleep, the bit where you're not dreaming. That's the bit where you are processing things over and over again that are important to you and filing them away somewhere that you can bring them back. So that's something when you're looking at how you're sleeping and how we can then use that to help you learn is to make sure you get that really good period of non-dreaming sleep. Now, rewinding all of that, you actually go through sleep cycles of deep sleep, non-dreaming sleep, and rapid eye movement, dreaming sleep, every 90 minutes or so through the night. And so you're gonna get several of those cycles happening as you go through the, the, your night's sleep. One thing that makes us go to sleep is something called our circadian rhythm. So that's something that is inbuilt in us and it's to do with the light and it's to do with a, a hormone called melatonin that's inside our body that's produced every day. And that's the thing that gets us ready to go to sleep. And that circadian rhythm in adults is usually making us sleepy around about 10 o'clock, 10 to 11 o'clock. In little ones, that circadian rhythm is really set a little bit earlier. So no matter how much a young child, and I'm talking about under eight or seven or eight, would like to stay up and be with the, you know, with the adults and at Christmas time or at a party or whatever, they'll often just fall asleep on the sofa. Their circadian rhythm and their hormones within their body have kicked in that bit earlier and they will just fall asleep. As you get into your teens, a strange thing happens and your circadian rhythm shifts. So as adults, we're ready to go to sleep between 10 and 11. But as adolescents, so when you're in your teens, you're probably chemically programmed to go to sleep between 11 and 1. That's all well and good if you're going to wake up with seven hours minimum, eight, nine or ten hours that you might actually be needing to sleep to get all these benefits of sleep that we've been talking about before. So if you're going to bed or going to sleep a lot later and then the alarm's having to wake you up to get to school, you're not getting that sleep, which is enabling you to learn and enabling you to behave normally. Your emotions will be all over the place. You're not repairing. So if you've had an injury, you're not repairing as well as you should be. And if you're under the weather, then your immune system is dropping off as well. And we'll talk about that in a little bit because there's actually eight different functions we need to talk about that happen when you're asleep. So we've now got you with your circadian rhythm out of kilter a bit. So what we have to do as adults is help you get as good a circadian rhythm as we possibly can that fits in with around what has to happen with going to school or having a weekend job or getting up to do early morning training, for example, if you're an elite athlete. And that's where we can start talking about the things that will help get us ready for bed. So I'm now going to start talking about a runny, really funny phase called sleep hygiene. Now, sleep hygiene is something to do with how your brain gets you ready to go to sleep. So if you haven't gone to sleep already, 
listening to me, um, this might just help you um, to help you get, get into a routine that will get your brain ready to, to switch off and get you to go off to sleep. So as much as you possibly can stick to the same routine. Try not to be on a screen for at least an hour before you go to bed. And that's not only impossible for you lot out there that are in your teens and have got a smartphone, but that's what you should be aiming to do. And at the very, very least, all of you, please go away and download a blue light filter to go on your phone and to go on your iPad. And if at all possible, don't look at a TV screen. So that's the gaming. That's the problem. That's the gaming out of the way. And we'll talk about that later with exercise and stuff and how that can affect how you get off to sleep. But what we need to do, first of all, then, is make sure that you are getting the brain circadian rhythm settled down and all of your, your chemicals and hormones getting to the point where your body's ready to go to sleep by not interfering with the light that your eyes are taking into your brain. And it's that blue light part of the light spectrum that keeps you awake. So please, please go away and do a blue light filter on any screen that you're gonna be using um, whilst you've got your, your phone or your iPad in your bedroom. Okay, so that's one thing to really think hard about. Another thing is to think about your chemicals that are getting you to go to sleep. So we've talked about a little, I've mentioned melatonin, another really important chemical which actually acts independently of your circadian rhythm is, is, is something called adenosine. And that starts building up as soon as you wake up in the morning and it will keep building up through the day. Now there are certain things that will actually stop that adenosine from making you feel sleepy and coffee or energy drinks, anything with caffeine in, stops that adenosine from making you feel sleepy. So that might be something that you need to think about. Are you drink, taking an energy drink? Are you drinking tea or coffee after about four o'clock in the afternoon? Young, If you're younger, are you having it after lunch? Because a cup of coffee will have enough, or tea will have enough caffeine in it that will stay in your system for up to 10 to 14 hours and it's half-life in other words 50 percent of that caffeine will still be in your system five to seven hours later stopping your body's normal rhythm from allowing you to feel sleepy and go to sleep so really really think about when you're having a cup of tea a cup of coffee or using an energy drink because that could really interfere with with getting you to sleep at night Another thing that we can look at to help set the scene for going to sleep is to do some relaxation. And if you're finding it difficult to nod off, there are various things you can do that will help you get off to sleep. So we're looking at things that involve physically clenching your fists, letting them go, pressing your arms into your side, letting them go, shrugging your shoulders to your ears and letting them go, pushing your back into the bed, letting it go, pressing your legs down hard into the bed, letting them go, screwing your face up, letting it go, and then breathing, slowly counting. In for a count of four and out for a count of six. Now, if you're in your room, nobody's looking, nobody's going to think that you've been an absolute twit, you can do some yoga breathing. That is, you block off one nostril, you breathe in through the other one. You block that nostril and you breathe out through the other. You breathe in. You block off and you breathe out. That will help relax you. Daft as it seems, give it a go. Acupressure can sometimes help too. So if you think about a baby going to sleep, that might happen. Sometimes that might happen. So there's a point just between your eyebrows, just at the top of your nose, which if you rub really gently, can just help make you feel more sleepy. And also rubbing your ears can help you feel a bit more sleepy. 
Now, I don't know, and I've talked to acupuncturists, acupuncturists about this, what on earth does it mean when we've got earrings in? I don't know, but take them out and just use that to see if you can help generate a little bit of that sleepy hormone that's gonna help you feel more tired. Okay, we'll go on to now the physical side of, of exercise and how that can help you sleep. So we know that when we exercise, our body temperature goes up, our cardiovascular rate, so our heartbeat goes up and our blood's pumping around our body faster. And it takes a little while for that effect to drop off. So it's actually better to do active exercise, aerobic exercise in the morning or in the afternoon and not to do it later in the afternoon or in the evening. If you want to do exercise later on in the evening, then do something more gentle. Put your YouTube stretch channels on or your yoga channels on and do something that actually then will help put you into a state of more calm exercise as opposed to active exercise. Exercise helps because it helps you to produce um, serotonin, which is a very feel-good hormone, helps you to relax. And it's even better if you're doing that outside because the daylight helps you to produce more serotonin because of the light entering through your eyes. And it's natural light entering through your eyes, not artificial light. So try and exercise outside if you possibly can. And it has to be, they reckon, around 30 minutes of exercise every five days or no five days a week should I say but that's hard to do sometimes so at least 10 minutes of really brisk walking just do that make it make your walk to school or go for a walk around the block or do something during the day that's going to give you a little bit of aerobic exercise outside in the sun for the or in the sun in the light for around 10 minutes or so every single day You'll produce endorphins that make you feel better, more alert during the day. So if you need a break in your studies, that's a really good thing to do. Or little ones, smaller ones, sorry, when you're at school, go out and run about, you know, in your playtimes and run about in your lunch breaks because that will make you more alert during the day. And then in the evening, keep it to far more gentle exercise, stretching to just help you to unwind. Okay, so let's go back now into... Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you about caffeine, something that made me laugh out loud when I actually saw it in a book. So they did an experiment with spiders and they gave them various different substances to see what happened when they spun their webs. So a normal spider, garden spider, beautiful, geometric, symmetrical web, everything's going on as it should do, beautifully spaced, perfect in every single way. They gave them various substances, but one of them was caffeine. And I can tell you that web was about five strands going out from a point that was slightly off center and then three or four little squiggly bits on one side. So caffeine really does interfere with how your brain is working. And that's not just stopping you from getting to sleep because it's blocking those sleepy chemicals from doing what they should do and building up during the day but it's stopping you from being able to concentrate. The other thing with caffeine is that when you have caffeine, you then end up having a, a situation in your body where your chemicals that make you feel sleepy are still building up, but they're not reacting with you because the caffeine's blocking it. The caffeine wears down, those sleepy chemicals come in and you crash. So you've got to be really careful with caffeine that if you are drinking anything with it in, an energy drink, a tea or a coffee, that you're aware that maybe up to five hours later, you're going to crash a little bit. And if you have another one to keep you going because you think that's good because you're studying, then you might not be able to get to sleep. So it's all a balance. You just got to you know, weigh out the pros and cons of, 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 of how things are going to be affecting you by using energy drinks and, and maybe using caffeine. OK, so I'm just going to go back now to the and I've got a list here. So I'm really sorry. I'm going to read the list because these are the really important functions of sleep. So you've hopefully we've had a little bit about why we're sleeping. It's storing stuff away and then it's making sense of the stuff you know, when, when we're having our, our dreaming. 
and that we know that it's going to have all these other beneficial effects on our body. And actually, it's almost like a, a prescription every 24 hours that, that, that's giving you all the good stuff to keep you going. So, so that I don't forget everything, I'm just going to read them out to you. So the eight benefits of sleep that help our bodies. It gives us the ability to learn and to memorise. It helps us make logical decisions and choices. It recalibrates and resets our emotional brain circuits. And that, that's why, you know, it's the old wives tale, isn't it? Go away and sleep on it. Often it does. You can wake up in the morning and it makes more sense. You can make more sense of whatever you were worried about or, or you might have been having an argument about. When you're dreaming or when you're in rapid eye movement sleep, you pr produce chemicals and hormones that put any horrible memories, any painful memories into perspective. And actually, it, it actually gives us a virtual reality that can run in our brain that we can merge all of our past experiences with our present experiences and sort of act them out, if you like, um, making sense of them. And it gives us that ability then to be creative and innovative without worrying about it because you've actually sorted that all out in our brains we've, we've enabled ourselves to problem solve and that in this day and age is just vital to be able to get information because we can get it from anywhere but make sense of it so really important part of sleep doing that where i come in as a physio and what makes it really important to me is that it restocks the body's repair and immune system. And you need, as a young adult and going into adulthood, seven hours of sleep. And as a little one, you need more. So, which is why little ones sleep a lot more. So you need at least seven hours of sleep when, by the time you're in, in, in secondary school. And that's a minimum, 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 minimum. You will need more when you're growing, coming up to, to, to puberty. Otherwise, your body's repair system and its immune system will not be functioning properly. And you've, you've still got so much growing to do. Right, sleep also recalibrates our metabolic state, which is the, the balance of everything inside our body. And an example of that is it balances out our insulin and our blood sugars, our glucose levels. And it does that at night, it resets it all. And it means that when we wake up, we have a normal appetite. We're not craving food, we're not craving sugars, we're not eat, making unhealthy choices with our food. Very important from that aspect of, of nutrition. And then the last, uh, next to last thing is that it, still on the subject of nutrition, is that it keeps the microbiome biomes in our gut, the, the good bacteria functioning well and we now know how critical that is to our immune system and actually we're finding out more and more about the neurons that line our gut they're very similar to, to a, a, a subset of brain cells so we do have a gut instinct we really do feel with our gut um, and if that gut's not healthy that's a, a whole whole I was going to say can of worms but I mean you get what I mean if your gut's not healthy then the whole of our body systems aren't functioning so well and then another thing that we need to remember is that when we're asleep, we are totally relaxed. Our blood vessels open up, our blood pressure drops, and our heart doesn't have to beat so hard. So it gives our cardiovascular system a bit of a break. Okay, so we're now going to be looking at where we're going, perhaps around my aspect of what we need to be doing or, or what we need to understand about where we are with the physical side of sleep. So we're going to do something now. So would you all mind sitting up straight? I want you to balance your head on your shoulders and your shoulders over your hips and have your feet flat on the floor. Can you all now think of where your head is? And I've asked you if you can to keep it over your shoulders. So your chin's probably tucked in a little bit. And if any of you are wearing dangly earrings, they should be dangling behind your collarbones. Okay. Now, I want you, if you've got something nearby, if it's your phone, brilliant, to pick it up and look at it. Can you see what you've done? Just stay there for a minute and your back will be rounded, your shoulders will be up and your head will be forward. So we call this eye hunch or technic. And it's a position an awful lot of us get in for an awful lot of the day. What that's doing is putting it an incredible load through the bottom of your neck. So your, your head weighs about five kilograms, it's quite heavy. 
and your head when you're seven is the same size as it is when you're an adult. So you've got a heavy head dropping forward on your shoulders and you've got a rounded back and you're slumped down. And that is really putting immense strain through a lot of structures. It can lead to headaches, it can lead to migraine, it can lead to back pain. We don't want that to be happening. So what you could do and what would be really useful is to put a cushion in the small of your back that automatically encourages you to keep a little forward curve in your low back when you're sitting. When you're using a keyboard, aim to have your shoulders and your elbows one above the other and to have your arms as horizontal as you can in front of you. You want your screen fingertip width away from your shoulders and you want the Google search bar to be level with your eyes. So that's a really good desk setup for those of you that can. With a laptop, it's difficult. With a laptop, I'd suggest on an iPad, you buy a, a keyboard that's separate and then you can get the screen at the right height, which is so important. And when you're using a phone, make sure that you have your phone, if you possibly can, a little bit higher. Don't sit with it on your lap. Don't slump and keep yourself in one position. So there are a few tips for how to look after what's going on with the, the weight of your head. But another thing you might find is that you're actually getting your jaw clenched and that you grind your teeth when you're really concentrating or if you're stressed out about something. And a really easy way to stop that from becoming a problem, again, is to get your head back on your shoulders, but to put your tongue in the roof of your mouth. And if you put the tongue in the roof of your mouth, as if you're gonna go, mm, you don't look daft because it looks okay, but it relaxes your jaw and it stops your teeth from clenching together. So a little tip to remember what you can do to just stop it if things are getting a bit too tense and too tight. When we lie down and go to bed at night, so it's the rest of our spine coming down our back, you've got rubber washers, if you like, the equivalent of in between each bone in your back. Okay, they're called discs. And those discs are made out of tough cartilage on the outside and a softer nucleus on the inside. And that softer nucleus, as it's called, the softer material on the inside, pulls fluid in when we're lying down and we haven't got any gravity or body weight going down through our spine. So our discs swell up. And you're taller in the morning when you get up than when you go to bed. So if you've got to take your height for anything, do it first thing in the morning before you've been up all day. What you need to remember, though, is during the day, gravity will gradually and everything, you know, the pressure down through your back will push those discs down into a shorter position. So the astronauts who don't have gravity all come back taller from space. And they come back about two, three centimetres taller than when they left, left the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, now why is that important? It's important so that you don't end up injuring your back. When you're in your teens, it doesn't tend to happen. But if you're doing the wrong things and you're sitting incorrectly and you're ending up with stresses going through the, the, the vertebra um, and the discs in your back, you set up problems that can then occur later on in life. So the better you can keep your core engaged, the better it will be for your back. And that seems a bit daft because we're talking about abdominal muscles when it's your back, but your abdominal muscles attach to your back and wrap around your front, okay? So they, they actually act like a weightlifter belt. And if you can pull those muscles in, then they will support your back. So look at doing some exercises that involve your abdominal muscles that really work hard to get those wrap around muscles nice and strong. And things like Plank, and I'm not going to demonstrate, um, and all variations of plank are really good for static, but you can add in movements with those. So again, you can go away and you, you can look at doing some of that as a less vigorous exercise, maybe in the evening, if, if that's something you would like to do. Okay, so I think we're more or less getting to where I would like to be and let you know a bit about why sleep is important to you. The recap that I'd like to go through is if you don't sleep, and they've done trials with this, and we know that sleep deprivation is a form of torture, um, that you will all develop joint and muscle aches and pains within 48 hours. So two nights without sleep, you will begin to ache and hurt because you're not producing your repair hormones. You need to have this deep sleep at the beginning of your sleep cycle to, to learn. And that's the bit that I really want you to have as a takeaway from tonight. If you read something 
or if you practice something, whether it's a musical instrument or whether it's visualising something that you're going to do as a, as a sporting technique, before you go to sleep, that's reinforcing all of those connections in your brain, which your brain will then prioritise and remember and will file away in that folder that you can easily access and it will reinforce it. And then when you wake up in the morning, you repeat reading that piece of information. You repeat practicing that piece of music or you, you visualize or actually practice that technique that you need for your sport and that will cement it where it needs to be. In the night time, your brain will also have been putting those bits of information that you have used during the day into perspective and had all of the feeling and the emotion and the interpretation to it so that you might even find in the morning you're playing it better because you've got the interpret interpretive bit in your brain that you are producing the argument in your history class better because you've made links that you hadn't even thought of before that you're able to do that particular high jump perfectly because the technique has been refined and sorted out whilst you've been asleep. So hopefully that's been of interest. Hopefully that stimulated some conversation in the house. Parents, don't think your child's being lazy if they're lying in in the morning. It's just their circadian rhythm has shifted and they might just need a bit of help to draw it back that little bit. Encourage everybody that's listening tonight to get a blue app filter on their phone so that we're getting our circadian rhythm hopefully more in tune with where it should be and not in tune with artificial and LED lighting. And then also try and get some form of exercise in there to actually push our bodies into producing the right type of hormones that keep us alert during the day and the serotonin that's going to help us to settle down and relax and rest at night. So thanks very much. Um, I'm available for Q&As. Things have been coming through um, while I've been speaking and I will endeavour to answer your questions over the next 20 minutes or so. Thank you very much indeed. Bye now.